Fold and Visit Cycling Holidays is a small tour company that operates out of an almost completely nondescript building on a narrow street near the Trindade metro station in the north central part of Porto, Portugal. I arrived in Porto along with 20 other individuals from all around the world to participate in the Way of St. James bike tour with Fold and Visit Cycling Holidays, a week-long bicycle touring pilgrimage from Porto, Portugal to the Shrine of the Apostle St. James the Great in the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela in northwestern Spain. After checking in at the Fold and Visit headquarters and being fitted on one of the company's many rental bikes, I met up with some of the other Way of St. James bike tour participants for a guided walking tour of the city with one of the Fold and Visit tour leaders, a young man named Jose. So technically the old part of the city, you cannot do anything to the facade. So if you want to get demolish all the interior of the building, but the facade you even cannot change the color of the building. You have to ask permission to the city hall and in 99% of the cases they will say Jose introduced himself and then took our small group on a two-hour long walking tour of Porto, Portugal, showing us the churches, the train stations, the architecture, and the history of this beautiful European city. This one, it's the traditional Portuguese cook. It's the pastel de nata. Once I have American said, okay, that's a pie with a pudding inside. I said, okay. My favorite part of the walking tour was when Jose took us to the Sao Bento railway station in the center of Porto. In this single room, there are approximately 20,000 blue and white tiles dating from 1905 to 1916. From the Sao Bento railway station, we continued our tour through the city and eventually made our way to the waterfront, one of the most picturesque parts of Porto. stock market palace and since the beginning the city of Porto used to be uh, a harbor city so we used to receive a lot of people from different kinds of different parts of the world so the stock market for the city was a very important building so the bishop of the city allowed to build Once there, we walked across the Louis I Bridge and entered the Burmester Wine Cellars, where we were given a short tour of the winery, 
and learned why port wines and other wines made in the Douro region of Portugal are so special. We try to use mostly traditional uh, mm. ways so we don't lose the, the tradition. For this one, for example, but of course for bottling the, the port wine, we don't we do not use the same machines as before because well, I mean, we need to, yeah. to bottle way more bottles. For example, we export 7.5 million of bottles in the group Sergibinus. Eventually, we were taken into a large tasting hall where we were given the opportunity to taste several of the wines we had just learned about. After our walking tour of Porto was complete, our small group of weary travelers returned to the Porto Trindade Hotel and promptly fell asleep. It had been a long day, we were tired, and we knew that we had a big day of bicycle touring ahead of us. In the morning, we woke up early and had breakfast in the hotel. There was a big buffet breakfast on offer and we scarfed down the delicious presentation as quickly as we could before returning to our rooms, grabbing our things, and making our way to the Fulton Visit shop for the start of the bike tour. Only the pedals. I was a little worried about the traffic leading out of Porto with such a big group. I didn't know how the Fulton Visit tour leaders were going to get us all out of the city without any of us getting lost or separated from the group. But to my amazement, the bike ride out of Porto was a whole lot easier than I originally thought it would be. We wound our way through the cobblestone streets, down to the river's edge, and then eventually found our way onto a separated bike path along the western side of the city. Sometime around noon, we stopped at a small local restaurant and ordered lunch. After a well-deserved meal, we jumped back on our bicycles and began the second half of the cycling portion of the day.
Before we knew it, we arrived in the sleepy city of Sposende and checked into the Hotel Suave Mar, a large rectangular hotel with white walls, a red roof, and a swimming pool located in the center of the building. That night, the Fold and Visit tour leaders, Sergio, Jose, Tiago, and Pedro, took us out to a nearby restaurant where we got our first taste of Portuguese seafood. As a vegetarian, I had a somewhat difficult time finding something substantial to eat, but others in our group ate extremely well, and our feast that night was a great way to end the first full day of our bicycle touring pilgrimage to Santiago de Compostela on the Way of St. James bike tour with Fold and Visit Cycling Holidays. So that concludes the very first day of the Way of St. James bike tour here in northern Portugal and Spain with Fold and Visit Cycling Holidays. Um, we have a very big group, there's about 25 people total, and I was a little concerned at the beginning how that was going to work out. You know, are we all going to ride together? Are we going to break up into smaller groups? Are they going to be able to manage all 25 of us? Um, but there are four tour leaders, and they do an incredible job of kind of blocking the traffic and keeping us all together. Every time we have to cross a major road, for example, they will step out into traffic, stop the cars, let us go through, and then they continue following us um, in a kind of repeat pattern. So there's always one person at the front, one person at the back, one tour guide somewhere in the middle, and there's another guy who's driving the van and supporting us that way. So um, I was very, very impressed with how they are handling such a large group. As far as the cycling is concerned today, the first and probably most difficult part of the entire day was simply getting out of Porto, Portugal because it's a big city and um, there's a lot of traffic. But it was actually pretty darn easy. Um, it was kind of all downhill to the river. And then once we were on the river, um, it was flat and enjoyable. And about not even like 10 kilometers outside of town, um, that's where the the road really opened up and we were able to kind of comfortably uh, settle into our bicycle tour up the coast. So yeah, the cycling was great. Um, my favorite part was probably riding bikes on these little wooden boardwalks that um, are in several sections along the coastline. I just found those, those wooden boardwalks to be really enjoyable to cycle on. Um, and the other thing that I was surprised about today is how many pilgrims there are uh, who are currently backpacking up to the uh, Santiago de Compostela in northern Spain. There are so many, I mean like hundreds of people are hiking this uh, trail up to the uh, Santiago de Compostela. So I, was, I knew that there were going to be a lot of people doing that, but I, I couldn't believe like there were hundreds, hundreds of people. Um, so yeah, that was really cool to see. And, and the backpackers, um, they're all carrying shells on the back of their backpacks, which is like a symbol of the trail. And, um, you know, we're doing the same trail as they are basically. So, um, uh, we're just doing it on bicycles and, and in a shorter period of time. So yeah, it was, it was a really great day overall. Uh, we finished at a wonderful hotel, beautiful hotel actually, in a, in a really scenic spot right across from the ocean with bike paths just on the other side of the road. Um, and then we went out to dinner and went to bed after, you know, it was kind of an exhausting day. The first day of a bike tour always is, but uh, very, very enjoyable. 
and we're off to a good start.